Hello and welcome to Sorted Food. And today it is chefs versus the internet. So here's how it works. We challenge Ben here and the incredible team of chefs here at Sorted to come up with their ultimate version of a dish or recipe element. Likewise, our normal reaches out for all of the expertise and experience on the internet through social media and then creates their own version. And to keep us on our toes, we've been joined by pro chef and potato princess Poppy O'Toole to judge a winner. So let's get down to it. It's chefs versus TikTok in the ultimate battle royale of Dauphinoise. Game <laughs> on. Three, two, one, doof! Doof! <laughs> Genuinely, one thing I struggle with when I go shopping for potatoes, mm. I always think there's so many different types. I never know which one to go for for what thing. I end up picking the prettiest looking potato. What should I look out for? <laughs> um, it depends what you're making. It depends what you're making. So, you know, if you're going to go for a mash, you want starchy because you want the starch molecules okay. to be fluffy and separate. But I think King Edward's are nice and starchy. Maris Piper is a good all-rounder. It yeah. can go into quite a few good things. Ben, what, you, what potato are you going for? Given we've got the princess of potato here, I thought I'd keep it royal and go King Edward. <laughs> for me, <laughs> deliberately chosen because it is more uh, starchy, more flowery. It's going to help to thicken the cream that we cook it in and it will be much more unctuous. Ooh, that's a good word. This is word of the month. Oh, is it? Do you get it on a little calendar? <laughs> <laughs> I was advised to go for a Maris Piper. It's a good all-rounder, but I do want a bit of starch content. I do want something a little bit waxy because we want to be able to bite through it. We want some texture. We don't want something really fluffy that's just going to fall apart. Chef Ebers, Shebers, what's the thing that makes your Dauphinois jump out then? It is going to be that kind of richness of the creamy mixture, slightly thickened by the starchiness of the King Edwards, but it's all about the flavour of the cream as well. So I've started with butter and sautéing off garlic, but then I'm adding uh, kind of roasting hard herbs. So I'm talking rosemary, thyme, sage, chopped up, added in, along with the dairy to infuse slowly and gently. What's really good to see is they've gone for a lot of butter which is always good with you're potato. You're such a chef. Not traditional in any way, but the wonderful TikTok community shouted at me to add some bacon in. And who am I to argue? So basically what I'm doing is frying off some bacon in some butter, adding some garlic, and then I'm going to add my cream and milk mixture, which we'll get to in a sec, to all of that flavor. All the advice I was given, the ratio, three to one, double cream to whole milk. I love how he's saying advice. So he doesn't yeah. get, if he ruins it, it's not him, him, it's someone else. Yeah. Yeah. I can't On even. advice. Yeah. But interestingly, that ratio is really important. So I think traditionally, it would have just been milk and it's the starch of the potato. I think it's only more recent. And I say traditionally, like Escoffier <laughs> and like, like old school. So, but now I think we associate it with cream. So we've kind of got a, a mixture, a blend, but mine's one and a half times and yours is three times. Three cream, two milk. Oh, here we go. Already a point of difference. Whenever I've made them, and I've seen them be made by professional, other professional chefs as well. Go on, do you want to try and drop a I name? I do want to drop the name. I've been Go trying to get it in all day. Michelle Rue oh, Jr. Oh, got it. Yeah, just oh, yeah, get it. Sorry. He made one in front of my eyes. Uh, but it was, oh, he called it a gratin more, but it was oh. very much similar. But it was just cream. Mm -hmm. um, fried off the potatoes first to get them a bit of colour. And then we'll put smoked salmon in it. Now that's that kind of bridge between classic and bringing new flavours yeah. to it. That smoky richness that you get from salmon, I feel like is a smoky richness you're going to get from his kind of bacon pancetta kind yeah. of vibe. Mm. But there's also versions out there that use things like anchovies in yes. the cream that give you that mm. richness and saltiness. Another classic flavour, a little nutmeg. You're paying Tetris with that. Yeah, <laughs> interesting tip was fill the pan that you're going to bake it in with potatoes. And if they kind of fit, that's a good rule. Interesting that the normal is choosing to peel your potatoes. Yeah. I'm not going to. <gasps> yeah. What? And I think this might divide people, but all the extra flavour, all the extra fibre, a little bit of extra texture on sort of crunchy bits. For me, I'm not going to. I'm with you on that. I'm, I'm an anti-peeler. Oh, are you? Don't get it. Don't mm. see the point in it. Oh no, I think for something like this, it's an intricate dish, well, it's a delicious decadent dish, but it's meant to be a little bit 
that's it. You meant to put a lot of effort into it. So I would, pe I'd always peel. I'd always really? peel. I've opted to chop it up to get more surface area as it fries in the butter. But more importantly than that, I'm now going to blend it. So we get all of the Ooh. herbs into the cream. Wow. Then I will season it salty AF. That's the most uncool thing I've ever heard anyone <laughs> say. <laughs> as salty as the sea, because actually we're not going to season the potatoes and it needs to have plenty to absorb into that. Salt, pepper, and now the zest of lemon. So my creamy mixture, that's going into my bacony, fatty, garlicky mixture with some nutmeg and a pinch of salt. Don't want to over salt it, but I do need the seasoning to be heavy because the bacon's already in there. It's already salty, but I've got to get it spot on. Bring that up to a boil, then down to a simmer and in with my spuds. How are they not going to break? Everyone said use a mandolin because it's a little bit more consistent. I need them to be the perfect thickness between too thin and too thick. So if they're at that exact, if they're at that exact level, they won't fall apart or break in the cream. Jeopardy. Whilst our normal is taking TikTok advice and using a mandolin, as a chef, I haven't got time for that. I'm backing them straight through the slicing disc of a food processor. But oh. I'm keeping the skin oh. on. That's I'm, cheap. I really thought you were going to just bring out some skills for a second. Yeah, I thought then. you were going to say, as a chef, I'm going to smash through them with a knife quicker than he can do on a mandolin. But no, using a machine. Pop <laughs> out in, isn't it? But there are points of difference here. He's cooking his first. I'm not. Mike, I like how you've taken loads of time, you know, carefully and precisely mandolining and not chopping your fingers off and then you just smashing a wooden spoon in there and just I'm trying to delicately make sure that they're covered <laughs> but you know yep. it's the cross between making it easier as a normal and getting it consistent enough to be consistent I love that Ever is bathing in potato and cream you know the food's going to be good when it slaps like that no more cream, when it's sloppy and yeah that's why I put it in a huge bowl because the cream was warm and beautifully seasoned, but I wanted to cool it down quick enough because I don't want to pre-cook my potatoes. These are King Edwards, they will go quite flowery. I want, that talk. I want that to happen in the dish. How do you feel about him slagging off you pre-cooking your potatoes there, Mike? <laughs> if he wants to take on TikTok on his own, then good for him. You ready for more controversy? Absolutely, Evers. As a food team, we quite like the idea of this being a nice rustic dish, but paired with some crunchy bits why we left the skin on. So now, having zhuzhed it all up in the cream, a bit like when you scatter a deck of cards across the floor, now kind of shuffle them all back together, and then they go into the dish stood up. So it's almost hassle-backy, oh. yeah. in terms of the layers oh. are just going the other way. Well, this is... Controversial. <laughs> it is controversial. I like it. It's I'm definitely not... taking the classic somewhere else completely. Yeah. So I'm now just rubbing some butter on the inside of my baking tray to make sure that there's no stickage. And then potatoes in, cover with cream until just above the potatoes. Now into the oven at 170 for 20 minutes, covered with tin foil. Then I'm gonna lift it, I'm gonna put some cheese on it, turn it into a gratin and probably get scowled at by Poppy. Now, I don't want mine to be perfect, but I do want it to be tight, well packed in. Oh, no, no. So I'm finding any last slot that I can just slide a few more in. No. Okay. I'm adding all of that wonderful cream. So there's plenty sticking out that will go crispy, but the bottom will begin to cook and go for that like floury loveliness underneath. With it all stacked up and creamed up, I've now tin foiled it, and it's gonna go into an oven at 200 degrees Celsius for half an hour to certainly start the cooking process, then tin foil comes off. But put it on a tray, because if any of that cream bubbles over, mess in your oven. Next, peel back the tin foil, grate over some gruyere and some cheddar, gratinate that, because it's a gratin. Uh, make the cheese all bubbly and gratinated, and uh, hopefully win a Dauphinois battle for the internet. Okay, so Poppy, under cloche A, we have the chef's version. Under B, we have the TikTok version. 
Ooh. That looks cool. That <laughs> looks very, very delicious. This is our effort from the three sorted chefs. I don't think this is representing don't, don't. chefs all over the world. So this is the TikTok version. Whoa. God. Two very different dope noirs. Very noirs. different. Oh. oh, that's a large portion. Oh, that's cut well. Okay, Chef Ben's first, and the team of chefs. Mm. <laughs> That's the noise you want. That is delicious. There's enough softness of the potatoes underneath that give you that kind of like creamy texture. And then you get that crispy bit on top, which is pretty delectable. That's gonna be very difficult, hang on. Next one. This is the TikTok version. Some people will call it less Dauphinois, more an abomination. I'm not sure if that's good or bad. I can't quite work out. It's really good. It is very different. The smokiness of the bacon or the pancetta is just Delicious on this one. I can't have it. I don't have any more words to describe delicious apart from delicious and it really comes through and it's very very salty and you've got the cheese and the cream and all that texture but then this one you've got that kind of infused cream flavour with all those herbs which is another element that's like I said that's very dirty this is very delicious. Oh! I'm really sorry Poppy but we're gonna have to push you for a winner. Does your win go to Ben and the Sausage Chefs? Or does it go to Mike and the TikTok community? Oh, no, this is so hard. Um, okay, so it's gonna have to be TikTok. It's TikTok, it's TikTok, look at it, I'm sorry. Congratulations. The cheese and bacon is taking it for you. It's always the cheese and bacon, that's all you ever need to do to win. There is Piper too. Wow. So, wow. Over to you guys. Um, did the right dish win today? The internet takes it now, but what would you say? Comment down below. If I'm honest, I thought I liked Poppy and I was going to tell you to go and check her out on her channels in the links downstairs. You should definitely do that. Massive thank you to everyone on TikTok who helped craft this recipe. We did it! We took the win! We beat the chefs! I want to taste them now. <laughs> yeah, let's get in there. <laughs> Spoon, classic. Oh, that was genuinely really difficult. I'm such a traitor. I'm such a traitor. We have an app. It's called Meal Packs and helps you plan and then cook a week's worth of meals using one set of ingredients, saving you money, cutting down on food waste and answering the age-old question, what should we have for dinner? It's free to try for a whole month. The link is in the description box below. Sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't hate you, I promise you. <laughs>